Hi, you guys. Today we are going to introduce some knowledge about analog telephony. Common analog signal tones are dial tone, ringback tone, busy tone, and caller ID signal. During a call, you will hear a dial tone when you pick up the analog phone, a multi frequency tone when you press the phone number, and a ringback tone after you press the phone number. But if the other party is busy, there will be no ringback tone, and a busy tone will be heard. Dial tones are one of the top things people associate with landlines. The noise actually serves an important purpose, as a dial tone is modulating tone that signals an available line. The purpose of this tone is to indicate that the phone is functional and ready to make a call. This tone, of course, stops when you start dialing. It sounds like this. A ringback tone is an audible indication that is heard on the telephone line by the caller while the phone they are calling is ringing, as normally a repeated tone. Normally, one cycle of the ringback tone follows the cadence I list below. It sounds like this. You can see the length of the sound and the silence of the ringback tone comply with the parameters we give. By this point, some of you may be wondering what is the difference between ringtone and ringback tone? First, ringtones can be downloaded to your phone and played by them. You will hear a ringtone when someone calls you. Ringback tones cannot be downloaded to your phone. Rather, a ringback tone is played by a Korean network to your callers. It's that ringing sound you hear when you call and try to connect to someone. So here is a clip of ringtone. So, after introducing dial tone and ringback tone, here we intend to introduce several different types of busy tone and the settings corresponding to each type on our PBX. Busy tone is a series of sharp buzzing tones heard over a telephone when the line dial is already in use, when call hangup failed, the line is still occupied after receiving the busy tongue signal. Let's use the P series to demonstrate how to configure busy detection. Open the menu, go to maintenance, find troubleshooting, and then choose pod monitor tour. Choose proper chunk to get the caller ID signal details. And after finding the true one, click Start. Then call into the PSTN line and wait for 5 seconds. Then hang up the call. After that call, you should call into the same PSTN line again for another 5 seconds. Then click Start button. Click Download to get the pod monitor files. The cadence of busy tone type 1 are listed below. Here is the busy detection settings for busy tone type 1. It sounds like this. The cadence of busy tone type 2 are listed below. And here is the busy detection settings for busy tongue type 2. It sounds like this. The cadence of busy tongue type 3 are listed below. Here is the busy detection settings for busy tongue type 3. It sounds like this. In addition to busy tongue, polarity reversal is also a hand-up detection method. 
Here is the BZ detection settings for polarity reversal. It sounds like this. If none of the above four cases can be detected correctly, please consider choosing loop current disconnect. In next part of this video, we are going to introduce caller ID. Caller ID is a telephone service available in analog and digital phone systems and most VoIP applications that transmits a caller's number to the called party's telephone equipment during the ringing signal. Where available, caller ID can also provide a name associated with the calling phone number. The caller ID issue often happens on PSTN trunks. Follow the step below to configure caller ID. Step 1 is to make sure the clip of the PSTN line has been enabled. We can check this by connecting a desktop analog phone to the PSTN line directly and make a call in to check if the caller ID can be detected correctly. Step 2. Try the settings below on the PSTN trunk page. If the following settings do not work for your PSTN trunk, please go to step 3. Step 3 is to use the pod monitor tool to get caller ID details. The process of this part is almost like I introduced in the busy detection part. There are two types of information transmission method for caller ID, FSK after the first ring and DTMF before the first ring. FSK is short for frequency shift keying of binary signals. It means sending a certain frequency to get a wave when transmitting a number and sending a wave of another frequency when empty. It sounds like this. In this case, we can see that the FSK event occurs after the first ring. After that, we can see two rings, and then your phone will display the caller number. DTMF is short for Dual Tone Multi Frequency. A DTMF signal consists of two frequencies audio signals superimposed on each other. DTMF codec converts the input information into a two tone signal for transmissions when coding. If you want to learn more about DTMF, you can check the video How to Analyze DTMF in SIP Calls by Wireshark. It sounds like this. In this case, we can see that the DTMF event occurs before the first ring. So we can see the caller ID before we hear ringtone. Alright guys, this is what we have in this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, get more detail about troubleshooting, check our knowledge base, get more information about system configuration, please visit our document center. I'll see you guys in the next one.